Hello, innovators. Do you like creating something on your own? Well, we have something for you that shapes your designs into reality using a technology. Tinkercad Tinkercad helps you to create, test, use and apply all this to create a dream design model or a project that you have been thinking of. What's more? You can even test your circuit online using Tinkercad as well as make your circuit without physical components. Let's begin by understanding what Tinkercad is. Tinkercad is a free, easy to use cloud-based online software for electronics, circuit designing, coding, 3D designing, and developing digital prototypes using electronic components. Tinkercad can be used by teachers, kids, hobbyists, and designers to imagine, design, and make anything. There are different categories of Tinkercad. We have three categories. The first is 3D designing. The second is electronic circuit designing and simulation. And the third is code blocks. Now let us see what these three categories consist of. 3D designing. In this category, there are several blocks that can be used to make any 3D model. Electronic circuit designing and simulation. In this category, you can do various applications of electronics. You can design electronic circuits that will be based on Arduino microcontroller. You can even design your circuits and also code your circuits using Arduino microcontroller. You can also simulate your circuit here to test if your code and the circuit is working properly or not. Code blocks in this category, there are several blocks for 3D shapes which you can put together in the form of block programming to create any 3D model. Now, how do we log in in Tinkercad? We know Tinkercad is an online software. So, for using Tinkercad, we need to create an account, just as we did for Arduino Create in the previous video. So, open any browser. In the next step, open Google. Type www.tinkercad.com and click on the search button. Now, the Tinkercad homepage will open. Here on the top right corner, two options are available, sign in and join now. Click on join now and it will ask you how you would like to use Tinkercad. You have to click on create a personal account. After this, you can sign in either using Google or sign up with your email. Once you do that, the following page will open asking for your personal details. Enter your details like selecting the country the or date of birth like month, day, an year and then click next. Now the create account page will open. Put your email address, set your password and then click on agree to the terms and conditions and then click on create account. Now your account is created and once you press done you will be redirected to the home page of Tinkercad. After creating an account, the default screen of Tinkercad will open. As you can see here, we have three different categories in Tinkercad. So to design a circuit, we need to select circuit category and then click on create new circuits. When you will click on create new circuit, the default screen of circuit designing will open. As you can see, the default screen is divided into different sections and their functions. This area is a circuit designing area. Here you will connect different components and make different circuits. 
This one is the component area. From here you can drag and drop the components in the circuit designing area. This is the search area. You can search the components here. Here are also some functions like rotate, delete, undo, redo and note which can be used in designing your circuit. This is the code area. Here you can program your circuits or microcontrollers. Have a look at simulation. Here you can simulate your code and circuits to check whether it's working or not. You can save your project here. And you can share your circuit or project from here. Getting started with Tinkercad circuit designing. Tinkercad circuit allows anyone to virtually create and program Arduino projects without the need of physical hardware. Let us see how we can make the circuits. Let's take an example of an LED and a battery. LED is a solid state lighting device which has two terminals, one being cathode and the other being anode. And as we know, a battery is a device used to provide power to electrical devices. It also has two terminals, a positive and a negative. Steps to make a connection of an LED and a battery. We need two components for this, an LED and a battery. First, we will search for LED in the search option on the right side of the default screen. And then we will drag and drop the LED in the circuit designing area. Next, we search for a battery and then drag and drop the battery in the same area. Now, to connect LED and a battery, connect the anode leg of LED to positive of the battery and the cathode leg of LED to negative of the battery. To give you more understanding of how to connect, follow the steps with us. Click on anode leg of the LED. You will find a wire coming out. Connect that wire with the positive pin of the battery. Similarly, connect the cathode leg of LED with the battery. But hold on, if you want to change the color of the wire, even that is possible. And this is how you can do it. Click on the wire and on the top right side, you will see a dialog box from where you can change the color of your wire. Now our connection is complete. Now we will test or simulate our circuit. Click on start simulation button over here and you will see that the LED is glowing. All right, so let's see how we can save this circuit. To save the circuit, rename your circuit over here and then click on the Tinkercad icon. You can see here that the circuit is saved on the dashboard. Now let us see how we can make different circuits using Arduino Uno. Let's take a simple LED blink circuit example. First, we will see what all components are needed for this. We need Arduino Uno, LED, 1K resistor, and a breadboard. Drag all the components in the circuit designing area. Let's start making the circuit. First, put LED on the breadboard and then connect anode pin of LED with one terminal of a resistor. As we have to use a 1K resistor, you can change the value of the resistor or resistance from here. We will put 1 here and kilo ohm over here. And then connect another terminal of the resistor with any of the digital pin of Arduino Uno. Let's take digital pin 13. After that, connect the cathode pin of LED to negative pin of breadboard and then connect breadboard negative to Arduino ground pin. Our connection is now complete. Now we will code our circuit. For writing any code, first we will click on the code area as is shown on the screen. 
we will write the code in this area. Now we will change this block coding into text coding. As we had shared in the previous video, first we will initialize pin. Then in void setup, we will define whether we are using pin as input or output. And in void loop, we will write the main code for LED blink. All right, we have done the coding and the circuit designing. Now let us test or simulate the circuit. And there you go. You can see that the LED is blinking after every second. Let's learn how to blink two LEDs alternatively using Arduino and breadboard. We will connect two LEDs to Arduino Uno and compose a simple program to light them up alternatively. Take a look at the work plane or circuit designing area where we will add the Arduino and breadboard from the components area. The rows of the breadboard are connected inside, allowing you to connect components by plugging them in the same row as each other. The special long rail along the edges are for easy access to power and ground. It is ideal to connect 5V and ground to these rails. Wire connection of 5V is typically red and for ground it is typically black. You can also double click along the wire to create bands for making a tidy circuit. Let's create a 2 LED blink circuit. So for this we need two LEDs, Arduino Uno, breadboard, resistor. First, add a red LED to a breadboard so its legs go into two different rows of the breadboard. Attach wire to any of the holes in the same row to make an electrical connection. Now, connect anode pin of LED with one terminal of a resistor the same way as we did earlier and then connect another terminal of the resistor with any of the digital pin of Arduino Uno. Let's take digital pin 10. Let's add one more LED to this circuit along with its companion resistors. And then connect another terminal of resistor with any of the digital pin of Arduino. Let's take digital pin 11. Note here, you can change the color of LED by clicking on LED and the dialog box on the right side. Connect the cathode pin of LED to negative pin of breadboard. Now let us use the text editor for coding our circuit. Before void setup, we define two variables which will be connected to Arduino. It's called int because it's an integer or any whole number. Inside the setup, just like last time, we will configure pins as outputs rather than inputs using the pin mode function. Similarly, the code inside the loop is also defined the same way. Using the command of digital write, set pins high slash on and low slash off and also define the delay in milliseconds between the high and the low. Now we have done the coding and the circuit designing. Now let us test or simulate the circuit. You can see here that the LEDs are blinking alternatively. Let us learn how to light up RGB based on distance measurement using an ultrasonic sensor. Let's first find out what is RGB LED. RGB LED means red, blue and green LEDs. These LEDs have three colors combined to produce over 16 million hues of light. We have two types of RGB LED, common cathode and common anode. In common cathode RGB LED, the colors can be controlled by applying a high power input to the RGB pins and connecting the internal cathode to a negative lead of the supply. In a common anode configuration, the colors can be controlled by applying a low power signal or by grounding the RGB pins and connecting the internal anode 
to a positive lead of the supply. What is an ultrasonic sensor? Ultrasonic sensor allows you to sense objects that are directly in front of it. Depending on how far an object is, your RGB will light up a color. For making this project, let us see what all components are needed. You need an ultrasonic sensor, Arduino Uno, RGB LED and resistors. Let's start with circuit connection. Drag all the components in the circuit designing area and then connect the 5 volt of Arduino to the positive rail of breadboard and the ground to the negative rail. First, add an RGB LED to a breadboard. As the RGB LED has four legs, namely red, cathode, blue, and green, these four legs will go into four different rows of the breadboard. Now connect the cathode of the RGB LED which is the longer pin of RGB LED to the GND of Arduino and the other three pins to the pin 11, 10, 9 of Arduino through the 220 ohm resistors. The resistors will prevent the excess amount of current to flow through the RGB LED. Now let us see how to set up the ultrasonic sensor. We have four pins in an ultrasonic sensor. VCC, trigger pin, echo pin and ground pin. Connect VCC pin of ultrasonic sensor to the positive rail of the breadboard and the ground pin to the negative of the breadboard. Connect trigger pin of ultrasonic sensor to pin number 7 and the echo pin to pin number 8. Now as we can see, the connections are complete. So now, let us use the text editor for coding our circuit. We would need to define our pins. The red pin is connected to pin 11, the green pin is connected to pin 9, and the blue pin is connected to pin 10. So let's make three constant with values as 11, 9, and 10. Trig pin is connected to pin 8 and echo pin is connected to pin 7. Now we will set red, blue and green pins as output in the pin mode function inside the void setup. Pin mode can have two values. In the first, we define either int value or variable name for the pin defined in the board. Second, we define a state value of the pin either input or output. Now we will set up colors. For setting up colors, we need to make three functions for each color. So we will define the function as void and write name of the color. For example, we are taking red and on every void, we take the integer value that is the int val so that we can customize how bright we want the LED to be. Now in the function, we will turn on the LED by using analog write function. Analog write takes in two int values. First, the pin that you want to affect. This can be a number or the int name. And the second is for the brightness of the LED. The brightness can be in the range of 0 to 255, with 0 being completely off and 255 completely on. As you can see here, we have written analog write red pin val. You may wonder now, what is val? We have taken a variable named as val for brightness value in the range of 0 to 255. Now let us see the working of an ultrasonic sensor. The ultrasonic sensor works by sending out an ultrasonic wave when it receives a pulse for 10 microseconds. Then once it receives an ultrasonic wave, it sets the echo pin to high till the duration of the incoming pulse. Let's now start coding for the ultrasonic sensor. How do we calculate the distance of any object through ultrasonic sensor? Let's go back to what we have learned in physics. 
we have learned distance is equal to speed multiplied by time. So the speed of ultrasonic waves is equal to the speed of sound in air that is 340 meters per second or 0 0.034 in microseconds. Now plug all our numbers into the equation and divide it by 2 because our ultrasonic waves have to hit the object and then return to the sensor. Now we will set echo pin as input and trick pin as output in the void setup. To make it easier, we are making one more function, void send ping for ultrasonic sensor. And in this function, first we set trick pin to low and then to high for 10 microseconds and then back to low. In the void loop function, we will call the send ping function and then we need to figure out how long the echo pin will read high. For this pulse in function is used. Pulse in function takes a pin key and a state. Then it reads how long the pin is high or low and then it will return a value which we are storing in a variable called duration. Now as discussed above, set the distance to duration 0 0.034 divided by 2 and then we decide at what distance will the light glow. For example, the red will glow in between 33 to 50 centimeters, the green will glow in between 16 to 32 centimeters and the blue will glow in between 1 to 15 centimeters. Now put if statement and make three conditions in if conditions for red, green and blue. We are now done with coding and circuit designing. Now let us test or simulate the circuit. Click on start simulation and then click on ultrasonic sensor. You will see one circular object in front of the sensor. Now let us move that object between 16 to 32 centimeters and you will be able to see that the green LED is glowing. Similarly, if I move the object between 1 to 15 centimeter, then the blue color LED will glow. And if I move between 33 to 50 centimeter, then the red LED will glow. Let us learn how to simulate gas sensor with Arduino Uno. What is a gas sensor? A gas sensor is a device which detects the presence or concentration of gases in the atmosphere. Based on the concentration of the gas, the sensor produces a corresponding potential difference by changing the resistance of the material inside the sensor, which can be measured as output voltage. We have different types of gas sensors, which are MQ2 or smoke sensor, MQ3 or alcohol sensor, MQ7 and many more. To make this project, let us see what all components are needed. We will need gas sensor, Arduino Uno, and resistors. Let's start with circuit connection. Drag all the components in the circuit designing area and as done earlier, connect the 5 volt of Arduino to the positive rail of breadboard and the ground to the negative rail. Place gas sensor on the breadboard like this. As you can see, the gas sensor has 6 pins that is A1, H1, A2, B1, H2 and B2. All the 6 pins will go into 6 different rows of the breadboard. The steps to connect the gas sensor with Arduino Uno are First connect 1 pin of resistor with A1 pin of the gas sensor and then connect another pin of the resistor to the negative of the breadboard that is the ground. Connect the H1 of gas sensor to the negative rail of the breadboard. Now connect A2 pin to any of the analog pins of Arduino. For an example, let us take A0. In the end, connect B1, H2 and B2 pins to the positive rail of breadboard that is connected to the 5 volt of Arduino. You can see that the connections are now complete. 
Now let us use the text editor for coding our circuit. In void setup function, write serial.begin in brackets 9600. Serial.begin9600 tells the Arduino to get ready to exchange messages with the serial monitor at a data rate of 9600 bits per second. That is 9600 binary ones or zeros per second and is commonly called a baud rate. And then in void loop function, read the signal coming from the sensor that is connected to A0 pin of Arduino Uno using analog read function and then store that signal in a variable that is A as you can see here. After that, print the data in serial monitor coming from the sensor using serial.println function. Serial.println prints data to the serial port as human readable ASCII text followed by a carriage return character and then give a delay of 1000 milliseconds. Now that we have completed the coding and the circuit designing part, let us test or simulate the circuit. Click on start simulation and then click on gas sensor. You will see gas fuels in front of the sensor. Now let us move that gas farther or closer to the sensor and you will notice a change in amount of the gas value in the serial monitor as you can see here. Applications of the Tinkercad software. Where all is Tinkercad used? You can make any 3D designs using Tinkercad software like building, cups, bottles, wrench, etc. Home automation is another field where Tinkercad is being used extensively for bed rest patients for example. Then the making of hand sanitizers is also done through Tinkercad software.